the genre has that sort of beckoning call to it. I knew what my mum was doing and I knew it wasn't meant for me, but I couldn't resist anyway. It was scary, mesmerising in a way, also just really grotesque. It was horror. VHS tapes were a common sight around the household. Eventually they'd be replaced with DVDs, but back then we could only afford to rent every Wednesday. A local place, not a blockbuster. The sort of movies my mum would rent out was always horror, but never mainstream stuff. It was either Italian or Japanese, in particular works by Lucio Fulci that stand out to me the most. I remember seeing some video nasties, they always had that Vipco stamp on it. There was a sort of taboo feeling to holding a physical copy of something that was either heavily censored or outright banned. But how did we get here? How has the genre changed from being outright despised to being widely celebrated? Well, we have to start from the beginning. It'd be near impossible to dictate when the genre started. If you did a Google search, you'd be met with a variety of different answers. The House of the Devil, a French short film, is the earliest example we have. However, while an important piece of cinema history, it's difficult to say if it was really influential. Did it bring about a new age of filmmaking? Did it set a standard for how horror movies would be made moving onwards? If those are the questions we need answered, then we begin with the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. A German silent film and an early entry in German expressionism, this picture features incredible set design of crooked homes and winding pathways, as well as shadows that are a predominant force throughout. In fact, some of the shadows are even painted on set to further distort the screen and audience's perspective, making them feel like a part of this nightmare world where danger lurks in the dark. As horror began to take shape, we saw just exactly what sort of creatures and ghouls were in that darkness, with Universal Pictures lineup of monster movies. It's difficult to really put into words just how influential these movies would become. Each monster from Dracula, Wolfman, Emotep, and Frankenstein's monster would become pop culture icons in of themselves. From the 30s all the way to the 60s, Lon Chaney, Bela Lugosi, and Boris Karloff, to name a few, showed us with their incredible performances that monsters didn't always have to horrify us, but could even make us feel sympathetic towards their plight, and in turn, horror as we understood it back then didn't have to be the main purpose, but rather a small part to the bigger picture, to make us think and feel, to broaden our understanding of the characters and subject matter. And before we all knew it, as the 60s approached, horror was about to change. Horror was always far away. It was either foreign or just a far away fictional concept with no grounds in reality. Then Psycho was released. They are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why she wouldn't even harm a fly. Suddenly, horror was in your back garden. It was on your doorstep. It was your neighbour. Alfred Hitchcock brought horror directly to the home of American audiences who were just leaving McCarthyism and the Red Scare behind them. Anthony Perkins' performance was particularly frightening as audiences were led to a false sense of security. And then the unthinkable happens. The main protagonist that had been introduced from the beginning of the film was killed off in the famous shower sequence which has since been parodied and referenced many, many times. This was an astounding move by Hitchcock that went against the conventions that Hollywood had become popular for. It changed the way we look at narrative and film and now all bets were off. Hollywood was going to see a shift in filmmaking and from it, many new filmmakers were about to terrorise our local theatres. It was the 60s to the 80s that I was most familiar with growing up. I didn't understand why I was so drawn to the genre or even why my mum, a die-hard horror fan, loved it so much. I wanted to understand. So when did you start getting into horror films? Oh jeez, it must have been when I was at primary school. Uh, I was always fascinated with horror. Um, I liked the Friday the 13th genre, 
uh, and I was always like creeped out by the fact with Jason. Yeah. And yeah. And what is it that you like about the genre so much? I don't know. It's um, like the Friday the Thirteenth. There was always something different uh, happening. Mm. Um, and sort of growing up, I liked the uh, zombie uh, films as well. Um, because you get the remakes, you get the old version, then you get the remakes, uh -huh. and it was actually quite fascinating. Um, I just like watching them. So you like being scared, essentially, and yeah. seeing all the effects. You yeah, why? Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I couldn't help but think back to when we were able to afford a DVD player. While my memories of horror go further back, it was at that time when one ordinary afternoon my mum had come back from shopping, and from the shopping bags she produced the first DVD we had ever owned. A director's cut of Dawn of the Dead. George Romero shocked the world with Night of the Living Dead, becoming the father of the modern zombie subgenre. However, his greatest work is arguably Dawn of the Dead, a movie about a small group of people trying to survive the apocalypse in a shopping mall. This is the horror movie that influenced me the most. For me, it stood out from everything else that I had seen. It was a horror film so large in scale, full of action and violence and social commentary that had gone over my head at the time. I knew that what I was watching was something special. Looking at it now, it's remarkable that it was even produced. Shooting in a shopping mall late at night in freezing temperatures, making sure that sets were tidy before the morning after for public opening hours. It was truly lightning in a bottle. You see how large the locations are, just how many extras were involved that simply wanted to be part of the film for having known who the director was. Even the military got involved, and this was all produced at a budget of approximately $640,000, earning $66 million worldwide. I still watch Dawn of the Dead to this very day, including as much behind the scenes clips as possible. The amount of love and creativity that was poured into this film really shows. To me, it's a great example of filmmaking, when everyone shows up to make a great movie and have fun doing so. Romero had the reputation of creating some of the most violent films in cinema, but he also had the reputation of being a kind and caring person that listened to everyone on set. Everyone had creative input, and everyone felt like they had an important role to play, no matter what it was. I owe a lot to Don of Dead and George Romero. I wouldn't be here without them. As we move forward into a new decade, we see a lot of filmmakers that have taken inspiration from writers and directors like George Romero, or John Carpenter, or David Lynch. Horror has never stopped evolving, creating new trends and setting new standards. The genre is slowly starting to receive Academy recognition, with movies like Get Out by Jordan Peele winning Best Original Screenplay and getting nominated for Best Picture. We're seeing fresh and new talent produce some of the scariest films of our generation. But there were still things that I wanted answers to. I wanted an insider's perspective on audiences' interests in the genre, I wanted the opinion of another filmmaker, someone that's currently in the industry. I was lucky enough to hear back from writer, director and producer Johannes Roberts. Horror, horror works for various reasons. I think horror, I'm very lucky to be in the genre because it's, uh, it's a genre that's still working and horror still has a place. And I think it's because it's a very communal thing, mm -hmm. like, like I, the, the, the sort of shock I just explained to you of the flare um, uh, in 47 or in Strangers, there's a, a sequence where she's uh, she's in a tube, in a like a little playground tube and a head just pops out. And again, I got the same reaction. People sort of jumped out of their seat and screamed. And I think people love that. They love it in the way of a fairground ride. You know, they love to scream together and they love to make each other scared. And and it's 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 a step above telling ghost stories by a campfire and then making a knocking sound to try and scare the other person. You know, it's that, it's a very communal thing where people love to come together in a dark room and be scared. Yeah, as a fan and as a filmmaker, what does horror mean to you specifically? As someone that works within it, I love the freedom uh, of, just being able to go as far as your imagination will take you and be able to explore things 
it, that you can't do in any other genre. And as a watcher, uh, there's nothing better than being creeped the fuck out, which is very rare, which is very, very rare. But when it happens now, I cherish it. You know, if I sit in a movie and I suddenly, I can't remember the last one where I felt that maybe hereditary. I'm not sure if I've felt it since where you're just sitting in the cinema and you're suddenly like, oh, fuck, I feel uncomfortable <laughs> now. I feel like really genuinely creeped out. And that's just a great sort of feeling. So, I hope to produce more films, as many as I can, that aim to scare audiences within the controlled environment of a cinema or the comfort of their own homes. I like to work with what I have, and thanks to some helpful advice from Johannes and great lessons from David F. Sandberg, I feel motivated to further pursue the genre and keep horror a part of my life.